Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a long time since I recorded a video, I'm not actually quite sure when, but uh, I've finally gotten back into being able to play a little bit. I apologize if my voice seems off, I'm just getting over the flu right now, so please bear with me. I tried to tweak with my audio settings a little bit, so hopefully it'll be a little bit better for you. I've got quite a good series of games here. So these are all of the games that I played over the last month, like I said. Uh, work's been a uh, killer recently, but uh, I did get to talk with Nate a little while. We did a uh, hangout, got some games in together, definitely f some fun games. I'd share my screen to him, he he'd comment on how I was playing, different lines, and vice versa. So you'll see most of this is in traditional commander, and uh, like Nate, I've sort of abandoned the 1v1 format. The ban list no longer makes sense. The... From what it seems, the person who was curating the list was curating a list to a format that he liked to play rather than a format that was healthy. And uh, after making the change back to the traditional, I definitely feel it's uh, much more healthy than 1v1 is on MTGO. I had high hopes for the um, 1v1 ban list, but unfortunately it it just wasn't handled with as much care as I would have liked to have seen. Because I've would have thought it would have been a great uh, way to bring uh, a more balanced list in line, but uh, it's an eight, it's a vintage format, so I guess we're gonna play with a high level, high power level, and we're gonna play in uh, we play with that in mind, I guess we'll say. So from here on down, we're gonna breeze through these games. So you have one loss here to Darth Longsaber after two other games. Uh, I, I started to make play mistakes towards the end of that, but we'll get to that uh, when we get there. Definitely so great money games for you. Trying the Nate Project style of recording today. So that, of course, means we're going to take a look at the deck list first. And if you can't tell by the title already, uh, we're back on Aloro. I know Nate's a big fan of Brea, but uh, I, Aloro's my go-to control commander. And... The reason I think I prefer Aloro over anyone else is there's a fundamental rule that I've always tried to follow when playing Magic. And it's to ask yourself the question, who's the control? In the match, who's the control? It could be two burn decks, one creature burn, one spell burn decks playing against each other. Even though both of them are like blitz, aggro, I want to kill you by turn four style decks one of them has to be the control deck because it will inherently, even if it's by a fraction on average, be slower than the other. And, it, and by that same fraction, it will have a slightly better endgame and it has to play to those odds. So against uh, who I was just talking about, um, Darth Longsaber, we'll get to it, like I said, He, but uh, jumping ahead a little bit, he plays Tassiger. And I commented in the chat, we had a great conversation going on about control. And I because he, he was like wondering why he like lost the first two games, it felt like. And I said, you're playing a control deck against a more controlling control deck. And I think that's why I like Aloro. There's very, very few EDH decks that I will sit down uh, figuratively against, and I will not be the control deck in that matchup. This, this deck is a glacial pace victory. It's going to extract it. Uh, now, it can go quickly with the Reservoir. We'll get to the deck in a sec. But by and large, uh, without Nuts Hands or crazy like Turn 2 Jace, Turn 3 Kaya style starts, I'm going to want to play the long game because the long game is going to favor me overall. I have big stuff. I have Necro, Yogwill, Twist, Dig, Tezzeret, Liliana Vess. I have ways to win the long game without fail i just have to get there and really the question that i always ask myself who's the control is making sure that you can identify if you're the faster deck in a game and if you are you need to play as if you're the faster deck present threats that demand answers uh put your opponent on a clock if you're the control deck you don't have to worry about the clock. You have to prevent the opponent's clock. And that's what I was saying to um, that opponent was Tassiger in that situation is actually the aggro deck. Uh, 
he as the weaker control deck so to speak has to present the clock because eventually i will make tassiger prohibitively expensive no matter how much he can fill his graveyard short of traumatizing himself and mailing half of his deck he's never going to be able to chain ta cast tassiger over and over again because i will be able to deal with it eventually that's the one nice thing about tassiger is it eats up all of his resources being able to keep chain casting it hoping that i run out of answers and this deck's all answer and that's sort of the situation that I presented to him, was that in that situation, even though he's used to playing control against decks like Edric or N um, maybe not Nid, that's a tough one, uh, Edric, um, Queen Marchesa, any of the aggro commanders, stuff like that, he can play the longer control game. Against Aluro, he has to make threats that I have to answer, not answers to my threats because i'll i don't need to resolve my threats the longer the game goes the better it is for me because eventually i'll be at enough life and i'll just resolving this will just be lethal to him so or, or resolving tezzeret if he doesn't know this is about to happen and i'm at 57 life uh there's nothing he can do about it he's just dead so he has to be the one that pushes me i don't have to be the first one to, to blink so to speak and I think he mischaracterized himself in the first two games a little bit. Because we talked after the second game. So, without further ado, I'm going to go through the deck a little bit. It's very similar to the old ones with a couple uh, small tweaks. We're not playing any creatures with two exceptions. We're playing Trinket Mage. Pardon me. Excuse me. And Spellseeker. Uh, basically because they're additional tutors. Uh, we don't have... Uh, beside, Well, we have the... Um, enlightened tutor but sometimes that is going to want to get something like necropotence or humility or moat so we want an artifact tutor in the deck as well so that's why trinket mage makes an inclusion we also have things like maps or so trinket mage can map into throne of the high city or strip mine so there's lines with that and it's worth including trinket mage just because we have map we also have the ring the vault the crypt and the top uh, diamonds there if we have land tax going, diamonds are a good get, but beyond that, it's not as necessary to Trinket Mage for, because it's cart it's trading the advantage of Trinket Mage back into disadvantage because you have to throw, away, or throw away a land, or card neutral, give or take. Uh, and then Spellseeker, because it's nuts. Look at all of this stuff that it's going to get. A bunch of tutors, uh, or less restrictive tutors, uh, not land tax, obviously. Basically anything else here. Uh, fragmentize, disenchant, psych rift, impulse, leak, scroll, remand, counterspell, drain, muddle, DT, knight's whisper. There's so many good options for it. Uh, in the threes, removal wise, we have council's judgment. I wanted an answer to a planeswalker that didn't target. That could also answer um, un, uh, an answer to a planeswalker. That's that besides vindicate that could also answer hexproof things so that way if they have one hexproof creature i don't have to tutor for toxic deluge and lose a bunch of life just to answer that creature true name nemesis isn't huge in edh but i don't want to lose to it so I, I wanted an additional option to something like that besides uh humility into removal or remote into it doesn't matter stuff like that uh we have the fabricate for an additional artifact tutor but we have big stuff that that can get crucible for the strip lock forbid because we were playing the necro and we're playing tax uh dark tutelage is our bob we're not playing bob just because he's a creature if uh dark confident was not a creature it would be this card so that's why we're running this over the other uh furthermore this lets us uh leave up mana on turn two typically we might want to do something or resolve a signet or drop a grim down on turn two turn three is when we either want to be making a threat or uh, it's really when we want to be making a threat. A lot of the things at three are threats. So we have uh, Crucible Worlds, Shackles, Relic, Tutelage, Spellseeker, Trinket, Holding Up for Bid. The stuff at three, or if we ramped four, is where our threats start to happen. So I wanted to keep the threats where they where they are, so that way I'm not I don't have to choose between Counter Magic slash Development and trying to deploy a threat. And the ability to still have a Bob going while Humility is in play is fantastic. 
Uh, like I said, moving up the, the curve a little bit, we have the Humility Moat combo. Just hard locks a couple decks I played against the new um, red green commander from. Uh, is it Ravnica again? I think, yeah, it's Ravnica again. Uh, that they can't cast non creature spells, and I just resolve Humility, and my opponent's just like, yeah, I can't beat Humility. There's nothing in my deck that beats Humility. Like, yeah, exactly, which is why I think those types of commanders are a little bit too cute, in my opinion. That said, he should have included Seal of Primordium, because I believe uh, he was saying that he uses, um, it's a Primal Surge deck as well, which is put all, keep flipping as long as you keep hitting permanents. So Seal of Primordium, non-creature permanent answer to Humility Moat. It's the uh, green version of Seal of Cleansing. It's color shifted. Uh, we have the Thoth teachings, Jace Kaya as threats, Reservoir as a win con, Tezzeret, Liliana, Lotus, Cruise, di uh, Cruise Dig, and Twist to round it out. I put these in on the same, even though when you sort, Twist goes there, because these are all variable costs. I, I can make them cost whatever I want, uh, especially later in the game. We are playing Winter Orb, even though we're not uh, abusing it quite as much as something like the Brea deck can. We have a ton of mana artifacts, but it also makes the game go long, and that's what we want. If we, like, land, turn two, uh, orb, untap, get a mana rock out, turn three, turn four moat or something, we're in very, very good shape, or, or humility in that situation. Either of those with the orb in play, we're in solid shape. So, t without further ado, I'm going to... This is, I believe I changed the deck a little bit in between these games, but this is the most current list. So uh, let's, I haven't checked these games yet, see which ones uh, work, which ones don't, so we'll see. And uh, right now, my Windows is being dumb, so we'll see how it works. So, opening hand, before I jump, yeah, so this deck, this still has Skeletal Scrying. I think this is one of the games with... Uh, Nate playing against Archangel Avison. So this might have been prior to that. So uh, we don't have blue mana, but we keep we see. Uh, I have two options. So I have turn one duress, turn two strip, or turn one duress, turn two scrying for one, exiling the duress, trying to dig into blue mana if I don't hit it. But I felt it was good enough. I have disruption here. I have disruption in the strip mine, and I have a little bit of draw power, and then any blue mana will totally fix this hand, and I don't even need any white. So because I was only off on one color from the hand, I felt it was comfortable. I'm just going to hit play, try to keep up with it. So uh, gain some life. Talisman. There. Mana problems are solved. We're going to duress, or we're going to bug. Oh, there we go. Ooh, come on. Uh, I'm going to pause it real quick. So we got uh, Chandra, Fire of Kaladesh, Angelic Overseer, don't even care about. I only have one choice in Deflecting Palm. Not that it's that huge, but it's one less thing I have to worry about in the deck. So it, the information is more than enough for me. If he had kept Deflecting Palm in hand, that would have been fine. But at least this way we don't get uh, domed by our own Aetherflux Reservoir. That would be uh, embarrassing. Excuse me, having a beverage at the same moment. So I ponder up into Well of Lost Dreams. That'll solve all of my problems because I have four mana. Yeah, this isn't in the list anymore, though. Chandra, Fire of Kaladesh. So I believe I... Yeah, I put Jace down here. So I put Jace to uh, tempo him because we're the long game. Tempo's fine. And uh, I want him to keep spending mana just doing Chandra. Uh, so we know about Angelic Overseer at this point. I uh, know maybe Angelic Overseer one other land, but um, all right, we're drawing lands like a champ, which is awesome. We're gonna take the opportunity to strip him here, and that's good enough. I yeah, I think he was out of lands at that point, which is why we went led for the strip line. So this turn was definitely gonna be a uh, strip Will of Lost Dreams uh, after the Jace bounce. So we used Jace to tempo, and then we tempoed again to. So we went down to one, but we were trying to put him off Chandra. So we double time walked him with Jace, and then we finally got the strip mine on him. Good enough. And once Jace and Will of Flash Streams is going, I don't think he any any deck can come back from that it, unless they have an answer immediately. I'm trying to keep my uh, mouth wet. 
so I can keep talking for you guys and girls. All right, so we have uh, one land opener, no black mana, but we have brainstorm and remand and top to get there. I think we're gonna keep it. Like I said, I'm I'm okay keeping hands that have stuff to cast early and are short one color. I I never want to keep a hand that's short two colors of the three color deck, uh, unless I have really really good blue cards and the other color is not even present in my hand. So that Grim Monolith changed my line actually. Because my first line was going to go top, peak with top. Grim Monolith is just strictly better. Because this means I can go next turn Grim Monolith into any nasty fat thing I draw off the top. Ideal draw here would be something like Tesseret. Because I can use uh, Soul Ring to put down the Talisman. Uh, Talisman Fountain for blue, blue. Grim Monolith and Tesseret. Use Monolith. Untap Talisman. Use Talisman, put down top. Tax. Tax is pretty good when I only have one land. Throw down the Talisman. I don't. I decided to not run out the top here. I want to hold up Remand to Vasa the Sunlit. And uh, I think this was a game while Nate was watching because we talked about to Vasa some. And he's like, oh, you got to kill that with uh, Deluge. And I was like, well, it's only the first one. He's like, eh, don't give him any cards. I just got three. Why do I want to give him any? Because he just spent, my opponent, uh, John Wall 2, just spent their turn putting out something that they're hoping is going to draw them cards. And they're doing that by giving me uh, three cards. So I might as well deny them those cards. So it's a good opportunity to deluge, I guess. And it costs me virtually nothing. It costs me a land because I have this ring advantage. And I'm just going to sit. I'm going to sit on this remand. Root Maze, pretty good. Uh, gl I'm glad I fetched the previous turn. Now we're going to brainstorm some of those lands that I land tax back into the deck. Uh, this was that's why this was such a good draw because I can tax the lands up, then use brainstorm to uh, change those lands out for real cards. So I can go get those lands back out of the deck, shuffle, and then draw a gush off the top instead of one of the lands. And now it's absolute time to uh, throw Laura down. Uh, my opponent has root maze in play, so lands and artifacts enter the battlefield tapped. But I believe that actually slows my opponent down more than me at this point because I'm already ahead of them. This is very very good when you are on the play on turn one because you are inherently ahead. You have one land, they won't get to play. You'll get to play something at two mana before they get to play something at uh, two mana, so on and so forth. But uh, it slows down development of a deck like mine or Brea. But turn four, nowhere near as good. This Gush is great, although the lands will come back tapped. I, it means I can play out these islands safely and then Gush them back if I want to try to put them back in my deck to tax them back out. So I'm gonna just the reason I put out Allura is I want to start uh, gaining life and using him to leverage advantage because I have mana and now I need cards. So I two drop Scroll Rack to go with this land tax so that way I can start putting the cards back. I'm gonna continuously pay for Risk Study. I'm never gonna let him have that card if I can avoid it because now he's just paid three mana to tax me. Spell Seeker, sure. I believe he gets yeah Worldly Tutor. Strange get in my opinion for Aura Thief, so he wants my land tax because he's stalled on mana, which I don't decry him for, but I don't I don't think that was the correct end. I think you have to get something like a removal. So I'm going to tap, uh, scroll back all those lands back. And the reason I am is because I have this gush to put myself back underneath three lands so that way I can fetch them back out. So I'm going to seal off the risk, pause real quick. I'm going to seal off the risk study there because I want to try to develop my mana as, uh, my advantage as quickly as possible. And I want to set up a turn that I'm able to use Gush to, in theory, if he plays a land on my turn, I can tap, uh, uh, I can use Misty, fetch a basic island, uh, sorry, float the mana for Allura, put Allura on top of land tax. Um, because I believe this will still trigger, um, so I can put a lure on top of the land tax trigger, fetch out a basic island with Misty, uh, use the mana from one of these to uh, draw a card with a lure, then use the mana from the other one after I can gush two, these two the two islands back into my hand. He'll be at four lands to my three lands. Use the second mana to scroll rack the two lands and anything else from my hand that I don't want back into the deck, and then land tax the lands back into my hand. Uh, I believe that's a line that I was looking at here. Is, 
uh, forgive me, the game was played a little while ago, so I'm not entirely sure, but I think that's the direction I was going with it. And I'm holding up her man continuously. Evolutionary leap, I don't care about that. So now I see the line. He's using leap to um, try to set up the aura thief. I don't know why he throws away Spellseeker there when he could have used... Uh, he gets a bird of paradise. Uh, when he could have used Spellseeker to block and then, then sacrifice it to leap. So he just hit himself for four damage, which is insane to me. So we'll we'll see how the game plays out. But I think uh, most of you can tell the writing's on the wall. But he didn't play a land, so whatever my line was, I don't think it works as well. So I decide I'm not going to play the Mana Crypt out yet. I don't need to. Even though it'll come in tapped, there's no there's no sense in it. I, I'm, I'm already ahead in mana. This turn, I'm actually going to... No, I'm sorry. I'm one short of being able to untap the uh, Monolith. But uh, Kai is going to spell an end because she's going to start eating his hand away. And then after his hand's gone... I'm going to uh, psych rift his hand, uh, his board back to his hand and start eating his hand uh, more. Limdol's Vault will, or I could uh, psych rift end step and then upkeep Limdol's Vault into Mind Twist and then twist the rest of his hand, twist the, his board away and leave him with three lands to my Aloro and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 mana and a Planeswalker and two cards per turn and then rack. It, it's. It's well and truly over at that point. Alright, Vergif. Uh, lose, lose the die roll. That's alright. I like a challenge every now and then. Ooh. Alright, I'm, I'm out of date apparently. So, uh, I keep an interesting opening hand, but I do have a potential for turn two, uh, turn two Tezzeret in theory. Uh, or, like, if my opponent goes uh, turn two soul ring into three drop and i drain it i could slam tezzeret on turn two it would be pretty cool uh i don't think i would drain the ring it's a t that's a really tough call i might be tempted to so i draw the command tower again i'm gonna throw away the heath because uh heath will have to fetch a white blue source for me i don't want to i have no interest in fetching the uh, scrubland because i want to it's i'm playing against a creature deck or in theory a creature deck so i want to maximize my islands or my blue sources because that's going to be my best way to fight them. I also want to make sure I'm getting my black sources because uh, Deluge and my removal is in black. Um, so my best option right here is to throw away the Heath because it will fetch the Tundra and keep the Verdant because it will keep the, get me the Underground Seam. And Command Tower made it a lot easier. In addition to Zora's Signet which produces the same mana as Tundra. So I might as well use the Signet and and fetch out the C, so that way I'm trying to keep my mana in good shape. He's going to fetch for a Sheltered Thicket. I believe I play Varigif a couple times. Talisman, fantastic. So now I can play Talisman and hold up Mana Drain, and this gives me Tezzeret next turn whether I draw land or not. And I was going to Mana Drain basically any spell he casts there. And to to his credit, he has Mana Crypt after that, which was a strange follow-up. I was I think he was trying to go 3-drop into 3-drop, because this would have gotten a green source, maybe a basic forest, and to play untapped, and then could have ramped again. So uh, I'm going to go drop Tezzeret down, and clank, orb, in play. All my lands are untapped. My opponent is uh, going down to... And now my opponent's punished for not playing the Mana Crypt and trying to use it to cast the Wood Elves first. Of course, I get a uh, copy artifact, pretty solid. So I'm going to make my own Mana Crypt make it top and put a Laura down and the reason I put a Laura here is I'm down to Deluge. Deluge isn't great because the comma will come down untap all of his lands in theory at one point of the game and then he'll destroy all my artifacts anyway so Deluge is a little bit too slow of an answer for Zakama so I need to find answers. Expedition map pretty good answer if I do say so myself and I think we're bucking out I used Tezzer to get the top in case you didn't see that. I'm going to try jumping to the end of the turn. Ooh. Okay, no. Didn't bug out. So, um, where did I get the shackle? Oh, I drew shackles off of Aloro's ability. And my opponent scoops to that, I think. Um, I think I played Varigov twice and I'm misremembering the games. Um... My other line here was probably uh, use Tezzer, keep making mana, expedition map for strip mine. And uh, keep kick Tezzer up again to three. 
uh, try to lock him down like using top and then finally tether it for crucible and keep him in a strip lock as long as I can keep him and I would immediately start hitting the green mana I'd probably go after Cinderglade uh, tra sheltered thicket first be first because it will always enter tapped whereas Cinderglade if he has two basics it'll be untapped so pretty good game plan ends Kalia player and uh, when you name yourself Kalia player I'm going to assume you're playing Kalia and if you're playing Kalia I'm going to play against you very competitively because Kalia is a good commander now if you're not playing Kalia maybe it's wrong to carry that mindset over but uh, I'm going to play the game to win. And my opponent is playing Brea, so my opinion is uh, I have no no qualms about playing uh, my best at all. Unfortunately, my, my Signet doesn't produce black. I have uh, Necropotents. But I'm going to ponder, see if I can, fi I can find black. None of that's black. I see Force of Will. I consider taking the Force. I think I shuffle here. I do, yeah. So I get the Preordain. So, unfortunate. I was punished a little bit, but... Uh, it's so, alright, I, I still have a lot of selection here. And I can put this muddle back with Brainstorm if I want to. Deluge, alright. I'm going to preordain, find a planes. And I put them both, and I get Urborg, fantastic. So my opponent, tap land, tap land. I'm absolutely going to try to slam Necropotence on them. Clank. Uh, and I think at that point, the game is just, tr just over. I don't think they can... Uh, so... My opponent seemed excited to want to play Aloro, but they said they don't spend money on MTGO. So I, I can understand. It's budget um, lands for sure. Uh, my rule's always been if you're not going to uh, build the, the best version of the deck, give yourself a challenge and build the best version of a budget commander. Don't use a commander that's known to be tier one because you do yourself a disservice. So sitting down against someone named Kalia player and they sit down with Brea, I'm going to play and keep opening hands expecting a tier one Brea list. Otherwise, I'm asking to lose. But if you play something like Brother Yamazaki, I know it's more of a casual deck because there's, it's not a competitive commander in any sense. So I'm more happy to just play along a little bit you know food for thought but uh this game's just over there's no way you can back i don't need deluge i have him in necropotence for bidlock he and i have grim monolith and talisman uh, into signet or signet into talisman oh uh, yeah i run it this way so that way i have this uh, option up and then i just get to keep fueling and now i keep forbid up I have Spellseeker. Muddle's just going to be pitched at this point. Top's unnecessary. Top's might be worth keeping just because I'm going to drain. And yes, uh, uh, really counter on Mana Rock. I said, yeah, I'm going to counter you on development. Mana development. Yeah, so I Spellseeker for DT. DT for Reservoir. So that way I can keep fueling Necro. And dump something unimportant. Lands. Foundry Inspector, and he says, uh, I should have countered the Foundry Inspector. I'm not threatened by a Foundry Inspector. This was a pretty good game, I think. He did have a sor sort of a comeback here. So what I did there was I played Mana Crypt and responded to Reservoir's trigger by casting an instant, and then Reservoir gained me 2 and 2 instead of 1 and then 2. It's a little bit of a trick you can do when you have an instant that you know you're going to play on your turn anyway. And I find Mind Twist, which is fantastic. So now I get to twist. So he, he did spent an entire turn on Setup. So I'm absolutely going to twist whatever's in his hand. I don't I don't need to know. I just don't want it to happen. It's Shimmer, Murr, Fabricate, and Swords. So uh, he said would have I would have countered these. And I think that's, um, no offense to Kalia player, I think that's why uh, this game's not going to go as well for him as he thought. Uh, these aren't threats to me. You can have as much mana as you want. I'm only going to care about the relevant spell. None of these are relevant because I have this. I mean, maybe he didn't know. I don't know if he knew that I had that yet. And I have one drop, one drop, free spell. Top, and I can keep reusing top off Necro. So, Man of All. I believe I spin top. Oh, no. Okay. And I'm not even blocking the Foundry Inspector. Uh, there's a chance I might want to use Spellseeker or Bounce Spellseeker with Cryptic Command at some point. So he's a, he's like, just counter it. So this is 
this is the type of spell um, that I would do. When it enters the battlefield, target artifact you control gains tap, draw a card for as long as you control quick sp spy. So, no, I'm not going to let that happen because I don't want you to have cards. And by countering this, I time walk him. All I do is take four damage, two of which is negated by my life gain, and one of which is negated by Aether Flux. So I time walk him for one life, or five, or two life, because I gain one and two, so three, so there's two left over. And I choose to counter and then bounce the Inspector instead of the Spellseeker, uh, just so that way I actually gain life in this exchange and I can keep fueling Necro. And then uh, on my turn, I think I'm going to muddle. I'm going to Guild Lotus, muddle, copy Artifact, copy the Guild Lotus, just go crazy at that point. Definitely a cool game, though. Uh, and he said, uh, yeah, Degenerate. I said, uh, and sometimes you just got to bite your tongue against the player. Like, look, if you want to... There's other combinations for this, and I would encourage him to look at the uh, part, the blue-white partner paired with the Vial Smasher if he wants to play a more interesting deck, or the black-blue partner paired with, like, Bruce Tall or something. That'd be a cool... Cool commander, for, cool combo for sure. Uh, better left undead. Uh, I believe Nate's played this guy a couple times. I always forget to click play. My apologies. My opponent's playing a Zuri Claw of Progress and has a great opener. Soaring into Thought Vessel off a not unwasteable land. Very cool. I do get to turn one land tax, so. Well, let's not ramp it, will catch me up. My opponent. Because they don't have their green mana, uh, and both of their rocks produce colorless, uh, they ha they sort of, I think, are forced to play into it, because this is their advantage. If they let... And I think this is actually one of those moments to play into land tax. He, wants, he is absolutely not at the control deck. He has to present me with a threat. And he's doing the exact correct thing of, I'm going to get the cards. I, he's either going to not do anything, and I'm going to draw the cards, or he's going to let me draw, get the cards off land tax and present a threat for me to have to answer, and I think he's doing the absolute correct play here. Now, if one of those was, if this was like a Simic Signet, I would not play it, because it means he can put down a Zuri and keep playing all of his things, but it's not, so I agree with his decision. So I just dealt fetch up two here, so that way I don't have to discard. I have Rack Tax going, so I don't want to lose any of the, the cards in my hand. Sure, attack me for three, it doesn't matter, I already gained that much and fetched away one of it. I'm going to tax again, because he played Dryad Arbor. Grab my other two. Tax back, f I believe, four islands and city. Yeah, okay. That's what I do throw back. I should have thrown back Tarn, knowing that I would probably pick up another land, but it's okay. Throw away Godless Shrine, Winter Orb, not necessary. He goes up a Cradle into Stalker. Very cool. Dumps some counters on the Stalker. So now, as soon as I see Stalker, I'm afraid of potential Infect. Because he led Cradle, uh, there's no way Mana Leak's going to be very relevant in this game. So I'm looking to maybe turn it in at some point. So end step, I believe I... Yeah, so he scoops. Uh, I think my line here was I was going to Psych Rift Azuri and set him back because Azuri is... Uh, I can't target Dryad Arbor because it is a land and Psych Rift says non-land. So I was going to target Azuri so that way it's 3 damage that he doesn't get to attack with. It forces him to have to cast it on his turn and he'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana to do so. So if I draw something like Strip Mine off this rack and he doesn't, I, I can strip Gaia's Cradle or yeah, I, Gaia's Cradle's the strip there. Um, and then I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, meaning I can mana leak the Azuri in theory. Th this was, uh, super tight, but it was a line that I was thinking about. And really, I wanted to stem the bleeding a little bit, especially because I have Yogmoth's will to rebuy all of this stuff later. So the longer the game can go, the better it is for me. Definitely a cool commander though. Unfortunately, he didn't want to play out the game. I think he had a chance. Next game is the Deniel. Deniel? Daniel? I, I'm saying Denial. Denial? Maybe that, that's it. Weird names. So I've turned one Enlightened Tutor for tax against Atrada the Silencer. Doesn't have flying, despite being a vampire. Um, choke, Destroy, Mana, Crypt. Wow, what a turn one. Jeez. 
Down to four cards already. I'm definitely going to tax this up, I think. Oh, no, I go for Crypt because it means I can turn two modem. And uh, it should... Maybe it was incorrect. Maybe I should... I, I think I looked at a couple different options. I think I looked at moat, um, or getting the moat out, meaning getting the crypt, getting dark tutelage, uh, because I would get to the moat eventually. Uh, my I think my line with crypt was I can go turn two crypt, turn three, or turn four commander uh, with mana up, I think was my line. And then I, the, mana, the commander will get me the mana. And hopefully... Yeah, so he's hell bent on Atrata connecting, but when it can't attack, I can just sit behind Allura forever. Grim Monolith, awesome. I thought I had a turn three commander in this game. And uh, this was one of the ones Nate and I were talking about, and he's like, yeah, that's why I include Grim Monolith. So you can have turn three Alluras. Because my original list didn't include it, the first two games, I think. He's super hell bent on attacking. Kudos to him, he's got his own Alluro. Um, and I, I agree with casting it there when I'm tapped out. If he knows he's going to do it, do it when I can't counter. So I'm going to use Scrubland because I might want blue mana. I got Vindicate, so I'm absolutely going to Vindicate his Alluro to make sure that he can't start drawing cards off of it. And I'm going to keep making my land drops. Um, he should be dumping everything that he gets with the uh, search back into the graveyard. And I think he's only dumped three... Turn. Oh no, he is. He is dumping everything. So I, I assume this was a turn just to spend the mana and be be uh, productive with it. Uh, unfortunately, I'm I do make a little bit of a mistake here, and I use um, workshop to run run the shackles out. Uh, my line should have been to use the strand, keep the work the workshop. It's not doing that much for me besides putting shackles out. I have the mana solution already. Um. Because he can equip sword and put it back out of range. So my better line would have been to play out the strand, use crypt and like C. Crypt oh, sorry, crypt C and Tower to um or whatever. To should have used mana to run out the shackles without cracking these two fetches. So that way, uh w if he tries to equip on his turn, I can respond by uh fetch tundra, fetch hollowed fountain and shackles because then i'll have three islands in response to the equip and make him waste mana that should have been that would have been a much better line than the line that i took i believe but i i am at my wits end like if he can answer the moat somehow with a bounce spell uh and the counter on the way back down i might be in trouble and now i can't shackles it and i realized my mistake so i might as well untap the monolith at this point i think maybe i got too narrow focused on untapping monolith and giving myself more mana even though i don't need more mana i got fof which is insane and i would have much rather preferred to put workshop back into the library with scroll rack so i'm gonna fof i he splits correctly i still take dig through time because it's so much better than anything else but i think water grave might have been incorrect i think i got it because i had the azorius signet so dig up and i believe i get uh I'm going to jump to the end of the turn. Digs so weird in the uh, replays. I don't know. I don't want to like keep clicking the turn button. Let's see if it'll work. Please don't bug. We were doing so well. I think we're going to bug. Um, unfortunate. But um, I believe my, my get here was uh, Mystical Tutor. Because that will let me... Uh, Mystical Tutor will allow me to tutor for Mind Twist. And take him out of answers if I want to. Or I can hold up Counter Magic. And I think my line here was to get Forbid. Because uh, Allura is going to feed me two cards per turn. So I can use uh, Alluro plus draw step to hold up a forbid lock on my opponent. And in theory, I can forbid twice in a turn, once with buyback, once as the regular cast and give it up. 
And then once I get a card that'll give me more card advantage, that's when I can start crediting him out. But it'll put him in a lock for the foreseeable future. Copy Artifact is, I believe, an additional um, Videlkin Shackles here. It's possible I should have gotten Spellseeker because then that'll, that'll get me Demonic Tutor and that'll get me anything else I need. So maybe that would have been a better line. But uh, definitely a good game. Uh, I think the Moat play trying to rush the moat was probably premature i didn't need to but i wanted to try to get it down around counter magic and i figured that he wasn't going to be ready for a turn two your commander doesn't do anything and the black blue deck has to sort of bounce this or like make me sacrifice it somehow so the sooner i got this down past counter magic when he wasn't expecting an effect like this the better so maybe it's right maybe it's wrong no one will ever know uh so ember 101 me have a couple games against two opponents in a row. That was fun. My opponents on Momir Vig Simic Visionary. Definitely a commander I respect. And I'm all down to five here, which was, uh, I think, one of the lowest hands I go. And I get a decent start. Kiora's Follower. So the reason I don't twist there is because I would have left him with a card. He's only doing mana development. And this turn, uh, unless he had, his, had Ancient Tomb, he can't play the commander. So now, now's my moment to try to do a little bit more development. And then next turn, I might be able to twist him for uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Which, if he plays one thing this turn, it'll be his full hand. That's it. All right, Transmute Metal. Oof. All right, what do you get? What do you get? Deathsquatch Recruiter. So I decide... I decided I'm going to hold up Cryptic Command because I think he's going to go for Momirvig. And I'm right and I'm rewarded. And now I can actually punish him even more. So I believe I... Oh, yeah, I forget to fetch. So I fetch first. Filter. Blue. Blue. Counter. Draw into Fabricate. Mox time is decent. Now I can twist his hand. All five cards, including the thing he spent one of his turns muddling for. And lock the game up and uh so we had vorinclex cloud of fairies a zombie and uh uh ghost quarter at dusk watch so uh definitely scary especially because a zombie could have come down on this turn uh if i hadn't because i had no more no counter magic left and i burned counter magic on um momir uh, a zombie could have put the screws to me pretty quick because she would have drawn a card every turn and cures follow would start untapping it every turn Fortunately, it's not a wizard, but that would have been a very scary card. I think my immediate line would have been to uh, one, two, three, fabricate sh for shackles. Hopefully, if we draw a land, play out the mock. A non island, I can play out the. Well, I have the one, and zombies is zero. So I could play out the island. The issue is, uh, Keyword's Follower untaps shackles, so it's not as good as we would have liked. But what I, we can play is the game of him never getting to use his zombie and I never getting to use his zombie at the cost of two of my mana per turn. Not the best line that I want to take. So definitely glad I had the mind twist there. On the next one, Krondor 2. I got two games against Krondor. He wanted a rematch after the first one. Krondor is playing Edric, Spymaster of Trust. I opened Tabernacle Hand. Fantastic. Crondor. Good luck, have fun. Birdie. Alright, sounds good. So, uh, I decide I'm going to hold up Mana Drain here. I don't need Tabernacle yet. I don't want to show Tabernacle yet. He goes for Phantom Warrior. I think I was going to drain anything at this point, because it, any 3-drop, because it lets me go turn to Liliana. And he doesn't even let me do that. And uh, the reason I wanted to do it that way is because this means I can play Tabernacle, tax his bird, put him back to basically two mana three mana on his turn so i get pseudo time walk with the tabernacle and resolve liliana and i think i was going to tutor for toxic deluge immediately so that way i have it in uh in the back for whenever i need and then i would start hitting the hand definitely cool opening hand definitely the right opening hand against something like uh edric i'm so glad uh uh leovold isn't legal in this format They could have worded him even slightly differently, and he wouldn't have been anywhere near as oppressive. Oh, and Grandor joins my game that I hosted and then quits. So, that's fine. He was on the same deck, and I had a... 
I think, capable opening hand. Definitely not as good, but uh, I did have, in theory, Enlightened Tutor Moat. I probably would have Enlightened Tutor to Humility, because I think that would have been a better line. So, turn one, Enlightened Tutor, uh, or Mana Crypt. I think Humility is better. Uh, turn two, hold up. I probably resolve Signet. Uh, turn three, use Signet, make another Signet. Resolve Tax, or hold up Counter Spell, and try to get the Humility past any Counter Magic. So, definitely would have been a good game, I think. Definitely, he would have had a much better chance in that game against uh, that hand than my initial one. Crytac, let's see what you got. I'm remembering all these games as I go. Chromium the Mutable. So, new Chromium, can't be countered Flash. Cool control finisher, not as good as my control. And I think that's the mistake that... And this is definitely like a newer card EDH deck, and I think... Uh, it was uh, risky. So I get to do Tithe Trick on my opponent's turn in response to that. I think, or I can hold up Disenchant. This, and he plays Bounce Land, so I'm going to Tithe Trick in response while he has two lands before he bounces one of them. And I get Hose. I'm going to get the Water Grave because I fetched. So I have Blue White, Blue Black, White Black, and White Blue again. I don't have a lot of black in my hand, and I want to make sure I can even through something like a strip mine, uh, get to something like humility, because that's my way out of dealing with chromium ever. All right, council's judgment, pass turn. I don't know why I passed the turn there. I think I think I wanted to represent uh, that I had something. Oh, no, he just scoops. Okay. Oh, it was the end of my turn, I think. Not sure. Oh no, it was that main his main phase too? Uh, I think he realized uh, when he uh, didn't draw anything else, maybe that was it. I think he won another game though. I think the other game was uh, worse for him actually. I think I get get a strip mine draw on this one. So when the dice roll, I get a hand of six instead of a hand of five. I see the signal, and I believe I put that on top, which is why I don't fetch immediately. Even though fetch could put me on mana drain. I, I want the Signet because it's going to give me turn 3 Kaya. So get pull up a Tundra. He fetched up uh, Sword of the Animus. Goes for Invisible Stalker. Good line. Um, I'm I th Oh, what? Oh, I'm holding up Mana Drain uh, plus Map here. And then he bounces that. So as soon as he plays Bounce Land, yeah, Strip Mind Draw. I thought so. As soon as he plays a bounce land and I float my mana in response, I'm like, all right. It w and this was entirely a mistake on my opponent because I had mana floating. If he knows I'm going to crack map with that mana floating in theory because there's no blue mana left and I can't target Stalker with any removal, it would have hit been his in his absolute best interest to go to main phase two, make me crack the map. I think my best get... Prob the land I probably would have gotten there would have been... Maybe even the command tower, just to make sure my color fixing is good. Um, but uh, no, he goes for he goes for bounce land immediately and is uh, justly punished for it. And of course, I draw wasteland afterwards. Um, I, oh, sorry, I drew wasteland that turn, and I make a little bit of a mistake knowing that he had basic basic. I should have played the wasteland, kill the chancery as soon as he played the plains, uh, kill the play strip, kill the island, and uh, just wiped out his mana like that. But I think he scoops to uh, the Wasteland play in a couple turns anyway. Escape Artist. Oh, no, th this game does go on a little bit. So he attacks Kaya. That's all right. I'll blink her out. I'm okay with a card every other turn because it means he's losing a card every other turn. So I like exactly what I have on top. I want to hide this Wasteland as long as possible in case he has another Bounce Land. He pitches us Steer Command. He's uh, pretty far away from it. I take two. That's all right. I'm already at 37 life despite damage I've done to myself. And he still only has two damage, so he can't even kill Kaya. It's time to expose the Wasteland, but uh, I believe this is the Tezzeret turn. Yep. And I search up the top because I want uh, card answers, and Aetherflux works well with top. Uh, and he go sends both a Tezzeret, which is fine. I'm going to top peek, uh, see if there's something like Swords to Plowshares to target this now that he's tapped out. I'm going to rearrange after that. It cost me life. Who cares? Kaya is going to draw me the Soul Ring. 
I'm going to use Tezzeret one last time to get the Crypt to guarantee my mana. Put Aetherflux down. I have Dig to get me mana or get me cards. So I'm going to Dig. I believe I leave the Strip Mine in my grave. I oh, know I leave a couple things down there. Uh, I should have d dug away the Mana Drain. Probably the Ponder just left Strip so that way I could play Seal to Cleansing that turn. Got Foff and Cryptic. Good enough. This is Counter and Removal. This is Dig. So I don't need the Planeswalkers anymore. They've done their jobs. They've bought me time and life. So I'm going to Foff and basically anything that he gives me with a couple spells I can cast. To his credit, he does a pretty good split here. And I end up taking the Merch Scroll plus Mana. So I draw the Vindicate. Uh, I draw the top for my turn because I Foffed in Upkeep. Because I wanted to make sure I drew this naturally as my draw step for the turn. So that way I would get an additional spell. Merch Scroll for Mystical. Mystical for vamp no mystical for knight's whisper knight's whisper the top back into my hand play the top again and that's enough to kill him ggs so it, it's pretty cool how this deck sort of just functions normally while aether flux is in play and it just wins you the game for dirtling and doing what you're normally doing to try to dig for more card advantage more card selection more mana Excuse me one moment. Need another drink. All right. Pretty cool game. All right. Irigama. Irigama? Irigama? What are these names? All right. So uh, keep Fragmatize on top. Pretty solid. But I also have an Imperial Seal draw. So, okay. This is uh, Nakia of the Old Ways. This is a cool game. At least I think it's a cool game. Stomping ground. All right, solid. Uh, underground sea, imperial seal. Anyone want to guess what an imperial sealed for? Hint. It rhymes with uh, uh, soul ring. Soul ring rhymes, rhymes with soul ring, right? Or bulbing. Um, bowling. There you go. Soul ring rhymes with bowling. Um, so I made a risky play because I know he's playing a creature every deck and letting him use Fauna Shaman. I wasn't too afraid because he had red and, or he had, he didn't have a second green source. So my risk is rewarded in the sense that he doesn't immediately have, um, and because he's playing his third mana this turn, if he tutors for Reclamation Sage, he can't kill Dark Tutelage right away. So I have one turn to kill Fauna Shaman in theory. Uh, as, and he didn't even tutor. Which is unfortunate. I would have absolutely tutored over ramp there. Uh, draw humility, but I don't have the white mana yet. You'll notice I'm lacking on that uh, terribly. I'm hoping tutelage will draw me into it. So I'm going to play the rack out. And uh, I'm going to hold up for bid mana instead of racking. A lot of mana. Oracle Moldaya. Okay. Uh, we don't need this up. Thorn of Amethyst. Interesting. Uh, Runic Armorsar. Don't care. I daily usually away that stuff, obviously. And uh, Nakia, I think I'm even okay with Nakia here. Uh, the reason being, it slows him down. And uh, if I can find white mana somewhere, Humility's just gonna, going to absolutely wreck him. And uh, unfortunately, my line is just shy of being able to uh, Crucible and Resolve Humility in the same turn. So you know, it's all right. I'll get it next turn. So I get... He plays... Skullwinder, unfathomably, and to his credit, makes a really cool line here. So he tutors, hoping to hit a land off the top and be able to infinite Kiki Jiki for uh, Zealous Conscripts. And I slay him Humility, and he cannot beat Humility. There's nothing in his deck that'll be this. Just to put it away, I'm going to Deluge the board. He's going to play Conscripts as a 1 1. I think I'm going to, I think he scoops before I resolve Moat. Oh no, he lets me resolve moat. And now he's he can't even beat me down with a ton of 1-1s. One I'm going to use Shackles next. And he's got Tabernacle locked on him. Tutor. I'm going to probably tutor for... Uh, uh, demonic. Demonic for Tezzeret. And go from there. Um, probably use, end up using Tezzeret to... Uh, uh, put him in a strip lock or and guarantee land drops for me for the rest of the game. That's my fir initial line. Uh, I can also use Tezzeret to go get my Aetherflux and 
slowly kill him because he, now he no longer has pressure on my life total. So Tezzeret getting Aetherflux will win me the game because I can just do nothing and win the game over five over a few turns. He did get me down to seven though, so kudos to him. Definitely a cool deck. I don't think Nikki is going to be as good as people think. And then uh, three games against Darth Long Saber. I know it's been a bit. Hope you're staying with us. Uh, but these are some pretty cool games, I think. We talk a bit. Like I said, Tassiger. See a decent opening hand. Tabernacle's garbage against him, but I don't want to throw it away yet. I don't want him to know that I have the Mox Diamond. Maybe he has, like, Nature's Claim. It would t be terrible to have it claimed. Brainstorm, I'm instantly rewarded by not fetching. I decided to play the Scrubland out. So I'm going to brainstorm in response to his fetch. Decide what I want to put back. And I have the option to fetch if I need to. If not, I can just Swords. Uh, he does nothing. So I'm going to fetch away. And I'm going to try to push a turn. Do I push Kaya here? No. So because he's representing Blue Blue and does nothing, I just want to want him to blink first. I don't need to push Kaya yet. And I can put him in a position where if I can get one more thing in my yard, Impulse will do it. Um, I should, and correction, I should have impulsed here on my turn. I should not, should have impulsed off water grave plains, looked for a blue source. It would have put impulse in my yard and started digging me towards, um, if I had blue source, uh, play the blue source, maybe say Tundra, we'll say Tundra or underground, let's say Island, I play the Island. Uh, and then I have one, two, three, four in my yard, at three mana up. I can use the scrubland to sword, so I'd have one, two, three, four, five, and two. I th uh, no, I'm still one off. I'm one off that whole line. But I want to present this as a threat on his end step, and then untap and hit him with Kaya. That's my line right here. So he's going to Demonic Tutor. So I'm going to Impulse in response, and I find Necropotence. So uh, sure, have your DT. And I, asked, I think I asked him in chat at this point. Um, of course, it doesn't want to show it. Um, I asked him in chat if he went for Sylvan Library. And he's like, uh, you maybe, you'll see. So I was like, all right. In my position, I would have gone for Sylvan Library. That when I'm impulsing and not counting a Demonic Tutor, maybe it's a signal that I don't have an answer to Demonic Tutor. So I put Seal of Cleansing down. And I th this is such a strange play. I, th I think he just wanted to load his graveyard at this point. So he's going to seal, uh, and I'm playing this out because it's an answer to a lot of scary permanents, and maybe I get drained. I was living in fear of him having mana drain here, and me getting punished for it, but I did not want to run anything into this Necropotence into anything, because this is going to win the game for me. Like, he can have a Sylvan Library if I can have the Necropotence. So I'm going to pay the one, keep the diamond up, and seal's going to hit. Awesome. And obviously, I'm going to hold swords up. I'm slowly stocking the yard for this dig. So he's going to strip my blue source, punishing me. But at least I didn't leave that as the only one open. And then he inexorably digs. So, uh, and this, this strikes me as so odd. So he delves away all of his yard, keeping three mana open. And I swords Tasker, and he doesn't try to stop it when he left all this mana open. This isn't a Tasker activation. There's no black mana here. So... It, it was a strange play. Get the Ancient Tomb, so that's pretty solid for my line here. And it means I'm going to push Kaya. Because I was able to hit Tasker without punish, so I'm going to immediately Tasker, uh, use Kaya, and he shows why he left the three men open and gave up the Strip Mine and the Demonic Tutor. I don't think I would have ever delved away, at the very least, Demonic Tutor. Strip Mine's safe to leave in the yard because it doesn't count as one of the cards, so if he had left DT, Strip, and like... Yeah, just DT strip and uh, gone down to two and intentionally car uh, sculpted his graveyard to those two. Uh, there's nothing that Kai is doing now that uh, he can't answer on his turn anyway. And he would have had these for later down the road. I don't think that would have been much better for him. But Kai eats one card. He throws away Necropotence. And this is when I think that's what he tutored for. Excuse me. <coughs> yeah, like I said, still getting over... Uh, being sick. So this tutor, I think he DT'd for Necropotence, and then realized he has no black mana. So, throws it away. Even though, if he draws something like Urborg, 
uh, he can play Necro. I'll kill it with Seal. But he'll at least be able to draw a new hand off of it. <coughs> my correct line is actually kill it in my upkeep or after his cleanup step. So that way all of the cards go to exile that he discards at the end of his turn. It's not to kill it right away because then he can dump a whole bunch of cards into his hand and then dump them all into the yard as fuel for uh, Tasker. So I want to make sure every card that gets discarded off Necro, if he had resolved it, actually goes to the graveyard. Or actually goes to exile instead of the graveyard. Pardon me. Soul Ring down, sure. Not doing much. I have a 3-3. Three, three. Now that's something I care about. Uh, and I give some consideration to uh, letting him have the draw step with it. I'm going to strip his black mana here. <laughs> Even though... And then uh, I realize he could have an instant on top, and I don't want him to get a spell for free, especially when I'm going to start using Liliana. So I'm going to just immediately take it off now. And I know he's drawing dead next turn. Deluge, he can't even cast. Sword of Feast and Famine, sure. He gets this in one of the other games also, I believe. So I, I find... Um, Yog I tutor for Yogwill, and I take a Yogwill value turn, eat the last card out of his hand, even though I know it's Deluge. It makes her plus-ups later better. I don't need the tutor again. I got Yogwill going. So I'm going to seal off the ring, and I'm doing it on his turn, so that way it's in my graveyard again. I don't want to crack seal during my my own turn. And I hid the necro, I believe. So we're going to necro up some cards, and he's going to scoop to necropotence. So pretty good game, though. Pretty good game. He had me on the ropes, I think, a little bit in the sense that uh, I had, he'd strip me off the blue mana. But he just couldn't follow up quick enough with Necro or Future Sight to really make it work. And that Seal of Cleansing did work that game. It kept him from probably playing the Future Sight with a sword out too early. Uh, although in that situation, he should have played the sword out early. I don't think he had it yet. Right, yeah, he was empty-handed when I, I took the Deluge out. So he top deck that, top deck that. Or, sorry, top deck that, top deck that in that line. So definitely a cool game, definitely a cool game. And Liliana's just going to take over the game because I get tutors every turn. Alright, game two. Let's see how this game goes. So the land tax opener, I don't think you can beat land tax opener because he is a land heavy deck. I am an artifact meta deck. Living in fear of stifle. No stifle? No stifle. He should have fetched water grave. And uh if you have shrewd eyes, you would have noticed that uh, he just lost like a minute and a half on his clock. He spent or a, a minute or so on his clock. All that time was thinking about land tax, basically. Everything else up to that point, he had played quickly. Even in the prior game, it looked like it took us some great pains to decide whether or not to allow me to have land tax. And uh, I think he made the wrong decision. So I got forbid. Great. Ancient Tomb to f push out a Talisman. That means one, two, three, four. If he plays land. Fan oh, strip. All right, nice. Well played. I still get sacks, though. Felwar Stone. I like it. I can dig it. So I'm going to dig up, I think, one. I don't. Yeah, I don't tax that turn. Because I don't want to discard. I have two cards left, and I know he needs more mana to operate his deck. He needs at least four for Tassigur to be able to work. So now I'm going to forbid dump uh, land. Yeah, dump. I should have dumped the Heath, I think, in case they had Brainstorm to Brainstorm tax combo. But I have two more. But it would have been nice to be able to have three in the deck to be able to tax racking. I'm going to fragmentize his mana, keep him stifled, make him have to play out more lands. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, got the Shrine. Maybe maybe this was incorrect here because I have uh, Videl Shackles and Four Islands is important against them. Necro, and I intentionally went down to two mana there because he knew about Forbid, but I had the counter spell. So I baited this spell out of him, and I'm um, immediately rewarded by such a nasty counter map. Even though Necro is not great against Winter Up, I don't want him to have that many cards. And thankfully, I would have drawn an answer immediately, but... He would have already refilled his hand, and as soon as I point a disenchant at it, he's going to look at his hand and maybe take another five or six more without fail. Because he knows he's not under any clock for me. He could go down to eight life and be 
essentially fine against me the rest of the game until I actually solidify an advantage. And he's going to get the best uh, 3-7, 3 plus 3, 3 plus 1 is 4 for his draw step. And he can go down to, I'd say 8, 7, 8 is safe against me. Gives him enough life to use Talisman and Force for the rest of the game. Uh, 17, 16, 17, 18 cards. We'll say the top 20 cards of his deck. The best seven of the top 20 cards of his deck. Uh, and the rest go into his graveyard to fuel Tassiger casts, chain casts. Uh, this card probably would have uh, lost me the game if it had resolved. So uh, even though I would have been able to deal with it on my turn, still would have been scary. And uh, he commented that he waited until the forbid was down. And uh, sometimes you got to play that way. Play the bait. He knows about the forbid because I bought it back. Walk him right into the counter spell. Definitely a cool game. This last game, I went to time on. I was, uh, or I was, I was in like three minutes or so. So I keep, ne I keep an opening hand of Necro, but this has to fetch a blue source to be able to preordain, and it can't fetch a blue black. This was super iffy. It was a sketchy keep, but I wanted to play a little bit more loose against him, see how the deck worked, because uh, I want to put the deck through more and more paces, seeing, oh, all right, kept a bad opener, or he wheeled me. Let's see how this hand plays out. Because I know I will win with Necro if it resolves. I'm going to push Mana Vault out, see how it happens. So he goes to main two, and he revokes my Mana Vault. So right, I'll be able to get it back later. He's going to seal for something. So I can light. I think my line here is, uh, yeah, Trinket Mage into Mana Crypt into Winter Orb is my line. Even though he has map, yeah. And of course he has workshop, which is pretty good. And chromatic lantern, oof. So he's going to have this super land every turn. Unpleasant. Seal of cleansing, fantastic. So I can answer revoker, unfortunately. Oh, drain, damn. Okay. And I gave him mana, but he only has one card. So he's probably just going to do a Tasker on his turn, right? What's he leave in the yard? I think he leaves nothing. Yeah. And sword, but he can't equip this turn. So there's that. So uh, I'm, fortunately, I'm forced into a really rough line here. So if I draw land, I might be all right. Because it means I can push Tezzeret out. And... Start using Tezzeret to gain advantage. If I don't draw land, I think my line here has to be um, use C and Crypt to Yogwill back uh, the, the Strand. Use Strand and ton Strand to fetch Scrubland because I want a second black source. Uh, or I would use Mesa because Strand's better in the yard if I get Crucible. To fetch Scrubland and then Seal of Cleansing, getting rid of Revoker. So I, that way, the following turn, uh, any blue land puts me on Tezzeret. Off land, my untapped land, my draw step, and uh, the mana vault. I think that might have been my better line here. I'm not quite sure. It's a tough call here. Yeah, so get the scrub. Now, I don't actually want to crack the seal yet. I want him to either invest mana in the sword, uh, atta uh, attach it to the revoker, and then attack with the revoker, something like that. So he's just going to attack Metasker. I'm not going to block. I want Trinket Mage to be able to block the first sword hit because I don't want him to get the untap underneath the orb. Got a diamond. I'm punished because if I had drawn blue source, I'd be able to Tezzer this turn. Cracks the map, gets Ancient Tomb. All right, that's a that's a, another super land with the Lantern in play. And now I'm looking at that Lantern as mm, I should probably kill this. Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have killed the Lantern sooner. Cut him off colored mana. That might have been correct. Thinking back, it might, it probably was. Uh, but I don't think I can go anywhere else after that. 
So I'm just hoping to draw any land at this point. I'm, I'm tapping my black sources to try to be able to put Necro down. Gets a Bayou, goes for the Equip. And this is my line here. And I decide uh, my better line right here is, let me pause. So tell me if you see it. So I'm going to Mystical Teachings for Psych Rift. I wanted to pause while the deck was open. See if you guys could guess. So I'm going to Mystical for a Psych Rift. And the reason I'm doing this is net on my turn, if I draw any land, I'll pitch the land to Mox Diamond. Uh, I gave him back uh, the map when he activated Tassiger. Um, that's uh, one of the previous turns. Uh, and he shouldn't keep cracking this. He should try to get one of these cards back. But no, he does. He wants to keep using map, which is fine with me. Um, so my line here is if I draw any mana source, I can use Seal of Cleansing, kill the Revoker, un, un, uh, free up my Vault, um, use Mox Diamond plus my untapped, my, the C that I'm going to untap, to make 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Overload Rift, bouncing back, Tasker Sword, and these guys all back to his hand. Even though he'll have Workshop to replay the Lantern, he'll get to play Mana Crypt for free, use... Uh, uh, crypt and like tomb to play out the sword and the map he'll have only the bayou up and then he doesn't have tasker down yet and then he has to play tasker and equip so on and so forth it just buys me time and that's what i need to play to right now is time but i'm losing time as the game goes on draw force of will that is not a mana source and I'm just punished bit by bit as this game went on. It's all right. And he decays that. I think about it for a second. I'm like, all right, decay. This gives me the Psych Rift line if I want it. Wasteland, my blue source. All right, cool. So do I bounce? I think about it. I'm going to bounce Tasker. I'm going to take the tempo hit. Because I can force ta Tasker on the way back down. Hopefully he delves away cards. If I want to. And I have Cruise to refill, so maybe Cruise is good enough. He keeps the Decay there wisely. So I'm going to force this as the tempo play. And he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Tassiger again. 8. He d gets rid of the Decay because he had to, which is fine with me. All right, so I have Tithe, finally Mana. Unfortunately, I'm still one black mana short, but then I have this. And... Uh, was was my so I think I oh yeah so I flashbacked um, mystical teachings for swords to plowshares and swords to his commander again. I don't want to take a hit from the sword ever, and if he if I get a hit from the sword in, I might not be able to uh, keep the fuel going. I think a better line there would have been to necro, but this way I'm holding up disenchant, and I also should have disenchanted uh, the lantern at this point also because the lantern is producing him one two mana towards Tassiger. so killing the lantern kills two mana or killing mana crypt kills two mana but this also means this doesn't cost him life it makes this a super super land so this is the better kill here and i should have done it immediately and i probably would have thinking back if i had killed this let's see how much mana he spends So he spends one card in the one. Yeah, all right. So he has one floating. So we had a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana. Um, and two. If uh, I had killed this, it would have cost him two. So he would have had exactly enough still, but he would have had to crack this to do so. Because it would have had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, 9 mana. Oh, and uh, one card from his graveyard, 10. Because Tasker cost 10 at that point. It was uh, 6, 8, 10. So um, he would have had to lose the Abrupt Decay. Uh, he probably would have fetched with the Windswept Heath and then delves away the Heath, but um, I should have killed this immediately. I don't know why I didn't. I think I was still thinking Sword was a bigger threat, but if Tasker can't ever get into play, I'm more than happy for him to just use the Sword. 
and keep the sword because it doesn't do anything without it without a thing to hold it I'm gonna bug no he's waiting to pick us oh he's trying to tap he was tapping one swept teeth for a sword he's grabbing sword immediately jump the turn uh, and I think at this point I scooped and this was probably also premature for me. Um, I think I still had a line here. I don't think he, yeah, I don't think he revealed anything. I think I should have disenchanted this on my turn, forced him to have to fetch and delve away his yard, and then fabricated for probably. Probably Shackles or Crucible. Maybe Gilded Lotus. Maybe Fabricate for Lotus. Lotus into Necro. Except that I'm going to get hit from Tasker. Necro myself down to like 2 or something. And uh, let the game go from... Like, necro myself down to enough to be able to take a full hit. And uh, see where it goes from there. Might have been a better line for me. Oh well. Game was good. Ooh. There we go. Cool games against Off Long Saber. If you're watching, definitely enjoy playing them. Last couple games, guys. Mull down to five against another Tasker deck. Hilariously, basic land. Uh, I have Humility against them, so I'm not terribly afraid. I don't want to crack this brainstorm yet, but I will if I need to. Get Psych Rift. So, uh, he just scoops. Alright, Luda. That's fine. Some people just don't like playing magic. War Scarred Goblin. These were my most recent games, I think, the other night. Gonti, Lord of Luxury. Uh, another game that's easily shut down by something like Winter Orb or Humility or Moat. Especially, uh, Humility because it means Gonti can't trigger. So I fetch for, I think, Mana Crypt here. Yeah, Mana Crypt. That could, because Mana Crypt lets me pull out Fel Restern and hold up Counterspell. And I didn't want a Demonic Tutor yet. I'll Demonic Tutor on my next turn. Soul Ring, sure. I'm going to counter that. Deny him the mana. And he scoops to counter on his mana development. So many people keep hands because they have Soul Ring in it. And because, oh, look, I can put my Commander out on turn two. Because, uh... I have Ebon Stronghold into turn two Gonti. That'll be good, right? Um, but it's not terribly good because you just have to fold to something like this. Uh, I mean, little does you know, I'm going to, on my turn, probably uh, Demonic Tutor for... What's the get here? I have one, two, three, four mana available. Probably Jace. I think I, I, I think a Demonic Tutor for Jace here and just... Slam him with Jace, see if he can answer it. Um, could also be Humility, because there's no way he a bl the black deck can answer Humility ever, so it takes away most of his win conditions. And then uh, last game against Relastra. Nice. Uh, it has last. Uh, my opponent has last in their username. Very cool. Let's see what we got. Opening hand down to five again. All right. Virtus the Veiled. Cool commander. I asked him why he didn't want to use the partner. And he said he didn't want to splash green. He wants to play mono black. I can respect it. Mono black's fun. So, cool game. For sure. Get the get key to the city down. Cool. Maybe he's playing a little bit of a re reanimator sub theme. All right. Other than that, maybe it's just to help uh, Virtus the Veiled uh, hit. So, I'm just going to try to push out mana as quickly as possible. Uh, he's a black deck. I don't need this Dark Tutelage ever. So I'm going to throw this away to my first Necro discard, probably. And I think this is why I like this game so much, and why I chose to record after this one. And uh, take time. Was because I had... I'm sitting, and I'm thinking, how much damage can I take from Virtus the Veiled? And still be comfortable. Maybe, and maybe still take one more hit, and not be dead. This is my line of thought right here, because I have to plan out basically the rest of uh my turns 
in the next two turns. Based off what I get off this Necro and the next one. Now I know I have... Uh, I know I have one card I'm going to throw away. So I have one, two cards in hand that I'm going to keep. So I always want to over Necro. And uh, because this is going to hit me, I put myself to an odd number. So that way it'll hit me to an even number. And then I'll lose an even number because this rounds up. So if I was at 27, I would cut in half to 13 and a half and round up to 14. So I lose 14. That's one extra card that I could have had for free off Necro. And that's if somehow he prevents me from activating Necro. On his turn somehow I don't know but always play around stuff you don't you're not sure about I mean you can be sure it's a black deck there's nothing he can do at instant speed that's gonna prevent me from activating that in response I dump a bunch of heart garbage I find Aetherflux Reservoir this will fuel me for the rest of the game dark ritual who whoa scary as soon as I saw this I was like I'm about to, he's about to cast hatred on me and I'm gonna lose the game immediately and I deserve it oh man I was so afraid I was about to be commander damaged out of the game. But uh, he uses the push out sword of fire and ice and equip, which is a good use of it. Because it is card disadvantage, but the sword recoups that, so I can I can I can get behind this line of his. It's still an odd amount. I also let him know he stacks these backwards, he should hit put the sword hit underneath Virtus so that way it effectively deals four damage to my original life total instead of two damage. This way, it actually deals one damage to my final life total rather than two damage. So I'm going to Necro a couple times in response. And I won't get these at the end of his turn. They'll be at my next turn. But I'm thinking how many cards I'm going to spend on my turn. Before I lose the life, I want to use it. Because otherwise, I'm paying essentially double uh, down the road. So we're going to deal with the sword. Make sure I don't lose the game to that. Definitely don't need that treasure cruise. Yet. I'm going to bide some time by swordsing that. I'm going to necro up some. Uh, I necroed up a little bit extra. Not much there. Just enough to have some selection and dump some cards. Royal Assassin, not as commander. All right. Sounds good. That can hit me as all he wants. I'll take one all the time. Its ability does nothing to me. I don't think I cast a spell secret the entire game. I think I end up using this for Force of Will Fuel eventually. So a DT for Force of Will. Yeah. Necro up again. And I do this just so that way I don't lose to something like Ad Nauseam off the top. Quite a spike. I think about it for a while. He's already got that effect in this commander. I don't care. Uh, I would be a little, a little bit punished if he played land and then equipped, but he doesn't, so I'm rewarded. Yogmoth's Will, and this is where the, the game turns around. Yogmoth's Will turns insane. So I get to immediately... Uh, fetch. I'm going to pu pull the exile up so you can see the cards as they happen. Fragmatize the Quieta Spike so that way you can't equip on his turn. And I'm getting life as all this happens. I should have responded with Sword and then Mystical and gained three life for the Fragmatize at, and three life for, or actually four life for each of those as well. So I'm a little bit punished. That's okay. I'll get over it. Brainstorm. Uh, I believe I tutored for the Enlightened Tutor, so I just want to start tutor chaining at this point. Play out the Signet. I have the force of will to fuel it. Now I feel really good with the Necro. Now I'm going to over Necro a ton. And I'm rewarded again. A bunch of lands that I, I couldn't use anyway. So three lands go to exile. So he can Diabolic Tutor at once. I have Vamp in hand. And re here's a really cool line that uh, I want to show you that I like to do with Necro when I do have it. So I Enlighten Tutor. And I, I stack this backwards actually I think. So uh, Enlightened Tutor and then Vamp, so that way I gain two life. I Vamp, Necro the one card that I Vamped for, and then I ET, uh, Resolving ET, put that card back on top. Now I can Vamp that card into my hand. I forgot about Jace, though, and I could have put the thing that I ET for in Exile and Jace the other card into my hand. So I put both of them in Exile. You want to guess where they were? It was a uh, Moat for the Enlightened. I don't remember what my uh, vamp target was, actually. I think it was a uh, cryptic command, if I remember correctly. I just want to close off all avenues. Oh, no, it, it was Winter Orb. Because he can't beat Winter Orb. Uh, if I have something like Winter Orb Moat in play, um, I don't even need to use spells to kill him with the Reservoir. There's no clock that he's going to present to me that can get past Jace and Kaya. 
and deal me damage before I gain 10 life off of Loro. There's nothing. Because I have uh, Flicker, uh, Bounce, Flicker, Kaya herself. Uh, Kaya comes back, Flicker, and then I can just keep using Kaya indefinitely. So there, I have two pieces of removal. Jace going to draw me cards. Necro is going to fuel me. Uh, I have Force of Will, Pitching Spellseeker. I have Teachings for whatever. There's no way that any black deck can come back from this point. Even if he has something like Ad Nauseam, I have the Force. So I don't think there's anything. And uh, on my next turn, I get to put down Winter Orb, and uh, he gets to scoop. But I think uh, once he saw the moat, I think he scooped to moat because he has to attack the to uh, be able to deal damage. And uh, moat plus Reservoir is a pretty good nail in the coffin. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. I gotta, I'm going to go eat some food. It's been a long recording, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you are glad to see me recording a little bit. I know I'm not going to keep into any regular schedule right now. It's just whenever I get some good games that I wanted to share, and this was definitely one of them because I played against a cool opponent, and I liked the idea of having to plan out Necro uh, as to what I'm going to cast, what I'm going to tutor for out of my deck on my opponent's turn, rather than waiting to see how their turn goes and plays out. And then going through my entire turn, deciding if there's any other lines I want to take. I like having, the more I can play with handicaps like that, that force me to have to think more lines in advance, the better I'm going to get as a player. And I encourage all of you to do the same. When you resolve a necro, try to think, all right, how many necro cards am I going to necro for next turn? Like, you get your first necro hand of 10 cards, you're going to pitch three of them. And you're like, all right, what three am I going to pitch? Before you even think about that, Think about what am I going to do next turn? How many cards am I going to necro for next turn? What's going to be my life total at the start of my next turn? What's going to be my life total at the end of next turn? If the board state stays the same, what's going to be my life total by the time two turns from now when I get to use those cards that I necroed for next turn? And thinking through the lines that far in advance is going to make you a better player. And it's going to it doesn't have to be with Necropotence in particular, but any type of effect like that where you force you to have to plan out your turns, Planeswalkers are an excellent example. Thinking through those turns in advance and having an idea of what lines you're going to make, it's going to be good for your playgroup because you're going to play quickly and you're going to understand what you're going to do on your turn before having to think about it and sit, wait for uh, your playgroup to be like, oh, it's your turn, Joe Schmo. You're like, oh, okay, who has what on the battlefield? How many of you have been asked that question? I know I have before. Like, oh, what do you have out there? Like, weren't you paying attention when I took my turn? So be be that good sport and know what you're going to do in your turn. And if you're playing 1v1, being able to know what you're going to do two, three turns in advance is going to make you win games uh, more efficiently than, any, than uh, you were if you don't plan those turns ahead. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you on the next one. I always appreciate uh, the comments. I've seen a lot of you guys have joined the channel recently. Glad you're enjoying it. See you soon.